<laughs> we got backup for you, you Steph. Come on. Hey, but no, we've got some rain that's going to continue here. Uh, light this morning, right? It is. Uh, right now, we have yes. got some pesky showers. I'll call them out there. But overall, things are looking pretty good. It feels pretty good outside. Here's our tower cam, and you can see some of the sprinkles left over on the lens right now. You're 44 degrees. We'll climb about 10 degrees higher. Those showers initially cooling things off right now, but things are going to improve as we get into the afternoon. Here's a live look at Doppler radar right now, and just east of the city. So outside of 275, you're heading out toward Bethel, uh, down near Maysville right now. You're probably seeing some sprinkles there on the William Harsher Bridge. Otherwise, we're in pretty good shape to start our day right now. Most of the showers that are impacting your travel have moved out of the area, but right now here's that slow slug of rain moving through Nashville right now, heading toward Raleigh, southern West Virginia, and as this storm really takes its time kind of crawling eastward, we're going to be stuck in the clouds, but we have that southern flow coming up behind that low, and that's going to keep our temperatures in the mid-50s today, so enjoy that. It's going to feel pretty mild. That's going to be great, but a lot of cloud cover. So right now we're staying in the mid-40s, 45 in Harrison, 46 Hamilton, Look at 41 up here in Richmond, Lebanon 45, Batavia 44. Some showers cooling you down right there and Falmouth. No doubt you're still getting some sprinkles happening right now. So the rest of the day, 55 degrees, partly cloudy skies at times. We'll get up to around 55 degrees, so 56 is your normal, so you're pretty good there this afternoon. Then as we get into the evening, we're going to say mostly cloudy. Can't rule that chance out for a scattered shower staying in the mid-50s. All right, that's a quick look at weather. Let's take a look at uh, first of the metro traffic right now, and we do have some issues on the roadways. Here's Doppler radar over the last two hours. Here's that slug of rain pushing through Mount Orb, Maysville. If you're down around Route 52 right now, you'll be using the wipers for sure. Let's add the interstates. Zoom on in. There was a crash at 275 uh, right near Montgomery Road. That has cleared, but this crash right here, 75 southbound, just below the Crescentville exit, is causing some slowdowns down to around 12 miles an hour southbound there. The two left lanes are open. It's the far right lane. The crash is off on the shoulder right now. Also over here near Lawrenceburg, seeing slowdowns because of those weld inspections happening on the Carol Lee Cropper Bridge. So southbound, you're slowing down to around 17 right now. Let's take a look at the camera. There was some police activity on the side of the road. It looks like that has cleared and now traffic is moving better there from Dearborn into Boone counties right now. We'll take a longer look at the forecast and when we have a first alert weather day coming up this week. That's in just moments. Now let's go over to Andre with a look at this morning's news. What are we seeing out there? Oh, I tell you what, we need Soleil Boom on the weather team. I mean, on a first alert weather day. <laughs> yeah. Soleil Boom. We'll get some of those thunderstorms <laughs> coming on through. That'd be great. That was a stretch. Well, maybe a little stretch. All right. All right. Maybe a little bit of stretch. I like his name, though. It's a very, very cool name. All right, check it out. Uh, here's our look from our sky cam right now. And you can see a lot of cloud cover just hanging down, moisture left in the air. Those rain showers out of here right now, but we're not done with them just yet today. Holding at 45 degrees as you look live from our levy cam right now. Traffic moving just fine over the Big Mac Bridge, but with temperatures getting up to around 55 today, uh, while one round of showers is gone, and you can see on the radar right now, it's south and east of us. Let's widen up the picture. Rain sweeping through Tennessee, heading over towards southern West Virginia here into Virginia. Also, North Carolina at this hour. Some heavier rain showers there. And it's this little pulse right behind it that we're going to keep our eye on that could bring us a chance of a shower, maybe a stray sprinkle on your windshield for the commute home. That'll be here this afternoon. But mostly, we're staying cloudy today. It's just going to look like that kind of day. And it's keeping our temperatures at bay. 42 right here in Connersville, 46 Westchester, 45 in Florence, 43 in Brooksville, Maysville, just about 50 degrees there, 48 right now. You'll get to the mid 50s here today, maybe a, a skosh higher there the further south you travel, but we're 55 right now. now that'll be our high today in the 40s. We'll slowly climb and kind of hang there through the seven, eight o'clock hour tonight. Now, as we look ahead, Rain showers just a little bit this afternoon. We'll be looking at tomorrow as well. We get into Thursday. Look at those scattered showers likely staying in that cloudy mode. The warmer temperatures, that warm influx of air, we're going to get up to around 71 tomorrow. That's going to feel great. But watch what happens when we keep advancing and moving into Friday morning. By 3.30, look at this, that heavy rain sweeping over the area. In fact, not just Friday morning, getting into Friday uh, into the evening, carrying into Saturday morning. And with that, the chance for some really substantial rainfall around here. We could get anywhere from, I'd say on an average, around two inches. But when we look at this thing, getting into Saturday, look at the totals here. By Saturday at 5 o'clock in the morning, could already see more than three or four inches of rain uh, all told 
once this thing's out of here over a three day period. So we'll start that alert tomorrow night, Thursday night, 71 for the high tomorrow on Friday, 58 degrees, still heavy rain, ponding on the roadways for sure. And look at that chance for some severe flooding as well. It's going to get windy getting into the weekend. The showers come to an end. We'll stay near 60 degrees. Then we start the new work week here looking at uh, scattered showers again. Temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. 725 we've been telling you about these snow bursts that are happening. Check this out. This is a live look at Wilmington and this is why they're on a two hour delay for the schools there. The corner of Columbus and North South Street. That brief blast of snow left the roads pretty slick and look right there. You can see where the roads are wet and if they're not treated. Yeah, this could be a dangerous situation for folks this morning. Wilmington definitely getting it this morning. We saw slowdowns on 71 north and southbound as that quick burst of snow moved on through. We'll keep our eyes on this. We'll keep our live camera up, but as you can see, the roads absolutely look slick right there. Here are those two bands of snow showers. This one right here and the second one cutting through Wilmington and those have caused quite a few issues for folks north of us for sure. Inside the loop, the only major slowdowns I'm seeing are right here from Ward's Corner back into Sims Township. Now, as we look a little further north here near Liberty Township, you can see some heavier snow showers. Westchester looks like 75 right now being impacted right near Tylersville Road. We'll check that out in just a moment, but look just a little further north. I counted and now it's even longer. There were 16 crashes here in a short amount of time uh, near the Dayton area, Sugar Creek, northward, even though it's out of our viewing area. Look at that. That's where one of those bigger bursts of snow were. And I tell you what, I'm glad it's there and not here. So forget about going that direction here. We're seeing some showers, uh, snow showers near Blanchester 133 right there and over here near 50 in Hillsborough. All right, let's take a look at the camera outside again. This is east of Love Madeira. While I don't see a crash yet, a lot of slow going here as you head northbound on 275. Andrea. But here at home, there are a number of issues on the roads this morning from a winter weather blast in our northern counties. Yeah, so Steph has the latest on those road conditions. We have got a bit of a mess in spots here this morning, and we have a winter weather advisory in effect until 10 o'clock this morning, uh, and that has caused some problems for us. Look at this live look here from the Jeremiah Moore Bridge. This is 71 northbound on this first alert weather and traffic day, and you're stuck there because of multiple crashes uh, from Oregonia to Wilmington, and I believe we have a live uh, look at that scene uh, right now. Uh, this is one of the cars involved there. this van. Check it out. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Uh, our crew is just getting on scene, and this is just one of the reasons that uh, that the highway will remain closed from Oregonia up to Wilmington. Looks like they're letting traffic go by in the far lane, but this van uh, on fire. It looks like at one point it looks like a terrible crash. We don't know the extent of anyone's injuries yet, but there are injuries, according to the Ohio State Highway Patrol Post, who told us that that is why the entire uh, highway was shut down for a time because there were so many back to back crashes. Of course, the earlier live shot from Wilmington showed you that blanket of snow that covered the area, causing a two hour delay for the schools there. So here traffic just being allowed to get through, easing up some of the congestion, but that's a long line of traffic back there. As you can see down the highway there, that goes clear back to the Jeremiah Moore Bridge there in Oregonia. So a long stretch, but it is moving very, very slowly. We're going to keep checking with uh, Ohio State Highway Patrol to find out exactly what the extent of the injuries are, but this looks like a bad one, folks, and that's not the only one. Uh, this is also the camera right here, 275 near I-71, and there are three different crashes in that area near where those two major highways intersect, and that is slowing you down this morning. Very cloudy, very cold, and seriously slick conditions. Below this accident on the other side of the highway, and this is as the camera I hope tries to swing around while we're talking live. Yes, look right here. There's another car. Look, lights flashing up on the median right there as we watch live. The timing couldn't be any better with ODOT's camera right there. Look at this car. This is why you're really going to need some extra time this morning. Some real dangerous conditions there this morning, Frank. It's incredible. Yeah. And we're going to take a break. We're watching all this. An update after this. Steph, we've seen our accident count growing with all this standing water. Some areas over an inch in some of these downpours and this morning. I'm not surprised by that, Frank. In fact, on some of the cameras we're seeing right now, uh, thanks to the ODOT crews there with their hands on the joystick, is this situation at Pfeiffer Road, can you imagine being the driver stuck in this car right here? There is a huge puddle of water here and this police car is blocking that right now, but until police got on scene, I saw trucks going by in this wave 
of water sweeping over this car and anyone stuck. We've got three different situations it looks like working here at Pfeiffer Road right now. Not just this disabled vehicle, but on the other side of the highway here, back in the other direction, there's a car uh, off to the right side of the road. There's a car up onto the median. I tweeted these pictures out at Steph D. Fox 19 now. Check those out. And uh, again, thanks to those crews. Give them room to work here while we get through this situation and some of the heavy ponding goes away. Quick break. We're coming right back. There were two pickups at the corner of Eden and US 127. That area shut down indefinitely until the FAA and NTSB investigators can get on scene. Looks like a couple of rotors missing from that chopper there as it hit those high voltage power lines and went down around 438 this morning. We've been live all morning on the scene with the first live pictures here. We'll stay on it live so we get more answers here, trying to figure out the conditions of all those involved. We'll be right back. From Fox 19 now, this is a breaking news alert. And breaking right now, Fox 19 now first on the scene at 430 this morning. This medical helicopter crashing into power lines, responding to the scene of a deadly car crash in Butler County this morning. This is on US 127 and Eaton Road again in Butler County. We have multiple crews on the scene right now, breaking down exactly what happened. Careflight, uh, Premier Health just put out this statement earlier this morning saying that, uh, that yes, while their vehicle was responding, as we've been reporting here all morning, to that deadly accident, they experienced a hard landing after coming in contact with those uh, power lines. There was no patient on board the helicopter at the time, and the three crew were able to safely get out of the aircraft. We do know at least one person, we don't know which member of that crew was of the pilot or not, uh, was taken to the hospital, two others treated at the scene, but we know all three, at least in that scenario, are okay. Give you a live look at the roadways now, and this is I-275 east of Loveland, Madeira. Four cars involved here, including a car that's crushed between a semi and a trailer. It looks like there are folks standing outside of the vehicle, so hopefully nobody hurt here. All traffic diverted to the far right lane. An update after this. And we're staying on top of this breaking traffic information here uh, this morning. In fact, the only real slowdowns we're seeing just a minor one here at the Cutting Hill. That's expected this time of the day. However, right out here, you're moving only six miles an hour, getting around this crash. Four different vehicles involved here. This is I-275 westbound or northbound right out here uh, near the Ward's Corner exit there. I'm going to zoom it out just a little bit. If you want to avoid this, and you're on 275, you could take 28 at the Milford exit, come down, you like my artistry there, Frank, with that great arrow, oh, down to 50. Yeah. Look at that, pretty fancy stuff. That'll take you into the city there along 50 there, Columbia Parkway. However, that's really your best bet right now because this is a pretty big backup. Let's show you the camera, give you a better idea of what's going on there. State police are on scene. In fact, there are two troopers on scene now. You got that one vehicle off on the shoulder, and then here's one semi, and wedged in between there is a car into the back of this trailer of this white pickup truck. There's an ambulance on scene. We've seen everybody out and walking around and Claremont uh, County dispatchers confirmed for us that no one was injured here. At least that's what the preliminary report is. So that's good news, but this is going to take some time to clear while they complete their investigation. So just pack some patience. Try Route 28 to 50 as your alternate route. It's 820. We'll take a little break. We're going to come right back. Every once in a while, this smoke plume gets higher and higher. And you see those flashes happening right inside the car right here. Even as firefighters work, you can see a washing machine right there. They go to push it out. They see a flash on this end of the car. So we're not sure exactly. Uh, there's probably a lot of cardboard in there with these things as they're packed on in. Maybe, Frank, you can widen the shot out. We can show you how visible, if you're driving, this will impact your travel because we'll see rubberneckers as we widen it up. You can see uh, this is the CXX rail yard right there in Queensgate, and there's that big plume of smoke just hanging over the valley right now and you're going to see that from 75 you'll notice it coming in from the cut in the hill and it's going to be uh, with us for a little while there it keeps flaring up flaring up yeah you'll notice right there that the uh, ladder truck is retracting right now and if you widen the shot back out this is what you're going to notice coming into the city that plume of smoke that's hanging but we have that cooler air you're enjoying driving into work right so that cooler air is not letting that smoke rise at all. It's pushing it back down and you can see that line just hanging over the area right now. And that's what we're going to deal with on this cool morning. We have some light patchy fog and that's not it though. That smoke is caused uh, just by that cooler air pushing it down and not allowing it to really uh, move around. 
633. We're following breaking news and two different fires to tell you about right here. This is a live look from the first fire. This is in Hyde Park where we're just learning the fire is knocked down right now. This one started around five this morning. Let's give you a closer look right now. The fire made it uh, all the tougher, of course, to fight with these cold temperatures this morning and a lot of that water making for an icy mess around the firefighters. We don't know yet who may have been home or if anybody was here when the fire started. Firefighters are busy, of course, as you see right there at the scene. So our crews have not been able to get much information out of them just yet. Let's get to some video, though, that our crews did shoot right when they got there and the smoke was pouring out of the roof, as you see right there. This is the 3500 block of Outlook Avenue there in Hyde Park. It's a two story home and again, still a very active scene this morning. We know the fire is knocked down. We don't know yet what might have caused it. Also, we have this second fire that happened just after 11 last night involving 25 firefighters. It happened on Meadow Vista Court. This is in College Hill. We know that two adults and one child got out safely. District Fire Chief Craig Coburn telling us that there were smoke detectors. Yes, but they were not operating. Firefighters say they did find a working fire in the basement. It's a one and a half story home. Now, sadly, the family dog and cat were not able to be resuscitated after firefighters found them there. We don't know yet what caused the fire. Damage estimated around $10,000. I-75 northbound has been shut down for a couple of hours now. There's a police investigation. We know there is a body under a sheet there on the side of the road here, not far from the median. So that is part of this investigation. We don't know what happened to that person. We know there wasn't a crash with some sort of a medical emergency. So police haven't released too many more details about it, but the northbound lanes remain shut down right now. South bound as you look live here, while they are still congested, they are moving and that is good news for anybody who's been stuck on the Ohio side. Now look at the time, 78 minutes. If you're in Northern Kentucky, it doesn't matter because if you're trying to get off a of Kyle's lane or trying to get off a of Kyle's lane or Dixie Highway, it is still uh, all stop, less go for sure. Here's a look at the Brent Spence Bridge. You can see where traffic is moving over, but look right here. Still shut down in the purple and everything. All your detours around at Dixie Highway, all in the red right now. As we zoom out, look how far back it goes, all the way to 275 and even coming around the loop. We've had a couple of different accidents that have been uh, happening near the Big Mac Bridge. And it looks like both of those have cleared now in just the last half hour. So now traffic is moving, although super congested. This is a live look at the scene there in Covington. Kenton County Police and Covington Police on scene of body found along the side of the northbound part of 75 just hours ago. Northbound shut down, southbound is moving. An update after this. You see the little yellow dots right there? These are all evidence markers and there are a lot of them. So that indicates, I'm not sure if there was a shooting that took place. We don't know how this person died, but just the fact of putting down so many evidence markers, there's a lot more behind what's happened here. This is not just a simple medical emergency. We're going to keep our eyes on this. Morgan Parish is at the scene asking questions. Let's give another look though at the highway because where they're doing their investigation, anybody stuck near there is now driving the wrong way on the highway and being forced to exit here at Kyle's Lane. We'll keep our eyes on this. It's 8.52. It's been a very busy morning. Hope you have a lot of patience in Northern Kentucky. We're back after this. The LAPD releasing this dramatic video today caught on camera of a pilot being pulled free from his crashed plane just seconds before it gets smashed by a train. But we got to warn you right here. Some of you might find this video disturbing. We blurred out some of the more graphic parts. Take a look here. The Cessna, which lost power and crashed onto the tracks, is smashed to pieces with debris flying everywhere after a high speed train crashed into it. LAPD releasing the body cam footage just today of their officers. Look at this, pulling the man to safety. Now watch as they pull the man out of the wreckage here. Just seconds later, watch right there. That high speed train had no time to stop. The unnamed pilot saved due to the quick thinking by officers, but they all got struck by flying debris as the train slammed into that plane. It actually happened Sunday afternoon near the Los Angeles Police Department station, luckily. It was also near a county airport. The pilot had only taken off moments earlier. He was the only one on board. The plane simply lost power and went down. The pilot was treated for cuts and bruises and is in stable condition. Luckily, as you see it happen right there, the train smashing into that plane. Luckily, nobody got hurt.